Good morning and welcome to the solution video to problems B1 and B2 of the 2022 Meta Hacker Cup. These problems are Watering Well and Watering Well Chapter 2, and they involve Boss Rob, back from the qualification round, who has planted N happy little trees and now wants to find a location to plant his, or to build, his watering well. Uh, he wants his watering well to be close to all of the trees, and the cost of a watering well is the squared sum of distances to all of the trees. So in this case, we have a watering well at 4, 3. We want the distance to each of these. We'll square them, and then we'll add them up. And that'll be the cost for this watering well. Now in this case, we have a lot of wells and a lot of trees, so we need to find some way of handling them efficiently. Uh, and we'll talk about how to do that in just a second. So let's talk about B1 first. The idea for B1 is the bounds on both the x and the y coordinates are 3,000. So there are at most 3,000 x coordinates and 3,000 y coordinates. We also have a whole bunch of different trees and different wells, so we need to handle them in a faster way than like the number of trees times the number of wells. Obviously, we could just calculate the distance between each tree and each well, but that would be n squared, right? It'd be n times q, and when each of those are 500,000, that's going to be too much input or too much for our program to handle. Um, okay, so how do we how do we do this? Well, one thing to observe is that we don't have that many unique x-coordinates. We also don't have that many unique y-coordinates. So we're going to abuse that bound and have that be some part of the runtime of our solution. The other thing we want to look at is the formula for distance. So distance is the square root of um, dx squared plus dy squared. Now usually this is a bit of a complicated formula, right? Square root can be tricky. But we're not actually looking for the distance. We're looking for the squared distance. So it's this squared. And the great part about this is now the squaring and square root cancel each other out. And the x and the y coordinates are independent. We can solve the x coordinates and get the answer for that and then solve the y coordinates and just add them together. So this makes it way easier, way simpler. We don't have to think about things in 2D anymore. We can think about things on a line, once on the x-axis and once on the y-axis. We can square the x distance, square the y distance, and then at the end, we can add them together. So now that we know the two axes are independent, we can imagine looking at this from just the x-coordinate. We're going to find the answer for the x-coordinates here, and we'll do it for the y-coordinates separately. So all I've done here is just kind of ignored the y-coordinates, and now we have these on a number line instead of a 2D plot. This makes us a 1D problem rather than a 2D problem, which is always a bit easier to solve. Okay, so how do we do this um, now that we have just one dimension? Well, the idea here is that since the coordinates only go up to 3,000, we can process every possible x separately, and we only really have 3,000 queries. We don't have 500,000. And by doing that, if we only have 3,000 queries, and we only have 3,000 trees, we can end up with a pretty quick runtime, right? We can just multiply the number of queries here by the number of trees here, and that'll give us the contribution of these two. The distance here is two, so it's two squared. Uh, that would be four times one times one. So this would contribute four to our answer. This contributes one. Um, let's also look at this here, right? So we have zero wells here. We have one tree here, distance of four, zero times one times four. That equals zero. So this contributes zero to our answer. And we can iterate through all pairs of x's and all pairs of y's, and that can give us the answer pretty easily. So that's the idea to B1, but B2, obviously we can't do that because we have quite a, few, quite a few trees, quite a few wells, and also quite a few x-coordinates. So for B2, we're going to go back to the formula and see what we can do from there. So the idea here is we're still going to use the fact that the coordinate systems are independent, right? We have one answer for x, one for y, we'll just add them together back at the end. But the thing we're trying to find the value of is the sum of like the well x minus the tree x squared. We want to find this for all wells and all trees. And uh, the important thing here is that we don't have to worry about the order of these two elements, right? It doesn't matter which one comes first because we're scoring it so it'll be positive no matter what. Okay, and if we elaborate on this formula, this is equal to the sum of the well x squared plus the sum of the tree x squared plus two times the well x uh, times the tree x. Sorry, minus. Minus here. Okay, 
So the important part about this formula is that we wind up with basically the solution, right? So um, this well part, this doesn't depend on the trees at all. And this tree part doesn't depend on the wells at all. The only thing we have left is just a linear term here. And we can pre-calculate the sum of the wells and the sum of the trees, and then we can just multiply them together. So since this is linear, it's, it's very easy to calculate. We can just do this in code. Uh, and then this winds up with actually a very clean solution, despite looking like it might be kind of complicated. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the problem, and hope to see you in round two for a chance to win a t-shirt. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.